G'day everyone and welcome to an old Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update tonight, the 28th of April 2015. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by a major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. The big topic of conversation today is Western Australia. But we'll also touch on some heavy rain that might happen around the, or that should happen around the southeast parts of Queensland as well. Alright, let's get into the WA system. So in relation to Australia, the WA system lies a fair way out here to the north-northwest of Exmouth. It's quite an asymmetrical tropical low, that means most of the uh, winds are located only on one quadrant. And you can see here the gale radius is only in the southeast quadrant. Now the Bureau of Meteorology are expecting to name this sometime tomorrow. It'll be named Quan, or Quang, uh, should I say. And that is the next name on the list. So we started this year with Kate, and so we've had uh, six systems, or we will have six systems named in the Australian Area of Responsibility. We've had about eight go through the area in the course of the season, which puts it at slightly below average. The Bureau of Meteorology Cyclone Information Bulletin this afternoon says that the tropical low is located at 14 south, 111.4, 930 kilometres north-northwest of Exmouth, moving west-southwest 15 k's an hour. The system will slow down and then start to track uh, southwards and then southeastwards. It's expected to develop into a tropical cyclone Wednesday, but not expected to affect WA's mainland in the next 48 hours. Now let's have a look at some of the computer model guidance. Whoops, I've jumped the gun there. Before we look at computer model guidance, let's have a look at the environment around the actual system. And uh, firstly, let's have a look at its satellite interpretation. You can see that since this eye was placed earlier today, we have certainly seen the system track in a southwesterly direction further here. So our actual, I'll just get rid of that because it might be confusing people. Our actual center of circulation is uh, located in and around that spot there. And you can see some excellent outflow here to the south, excellent outflow here to the uh, north and, and, and east of the system. So we have a certainly a tropical low that's in a fairly good area of development. If we just take a look at some of the other uh, imagery there, you can see very strong convective processes occurring right near the center of the system. And uh, water vapour shows not too much dry air in the region. Now if we take a look at the total precipitable water there, we can actually see this orange and red and brown colouring shows us a uh, fairly moist atmosphere. Uh, the blues show us very dry atmosphere. So you can see near continental WA we've got very dry air, but as soon as we get out into the Indian Ocean we've got moist air. It's attached to uh, the equatorial air mass here over Indonesia, uh, pulling a lot of moisture into the system centre. So even though there's a lot of dry air near the coast, it's attached to a lot of moisture at the moment, so no signs of weakening because of that. Sea surface temperatures are excellent. They're about 30 to 32 degrees in the area, so fantastic sea surface temperatures. No problems there whatsoever, even late in the season. In fact, most of the year out here, uh, there's no problems with sea surface temperatures. It's usually the dry air that's the biggest issue. And following the dry air, the biggest issue in the area is vertical wind shear. Especially this time of year, we start to get stronger jet streams, uh, and those jet streams tend to move further to the north, and those jet streams tend to create an increase in wind shear. But at the moment, the system lies underneath an upper-level anticyclone, and the upper-level anticyclone is providing beautiful conditions for this system to intensify, and intensify pretty rapidly as well. So we're looking at wind shear values of 10 knots at the moment on the SIMS shear analysis. As the system tracks, if we look at the expectation of the track here, the system would be expected to move in this direction and then out to, through into uh, WA. Now, as it does so, we're expecting it to plough through some fairly strong vertical shear on its approach to the coast. And so that vertical shear is expected to rip the system apart before it gets to the coast. But in the meantime, in the next 24 to 48 hours, the system is expected to intensify. And don't be surprised if we see a period of rapid intensification either overnight tonight or overnight tomorrow night. If we look at why the system has such excellent outflow to the south, we've got a trough system in through here. You've got a cold front. You can make it out if you know what you're looking for. See this uh, plume of cloud and, and, and strong thunderstorm activity pushing north into the Indian Ocean. That is the trough system. And what we have here is the uh, the cyclone, or the low, sorry, which will be a cyclone shortly, um, is uh, allowed to... Uh, it's cloud tops are being allowed to uh, move away from the center of the system, but not enough, not enough to create vertical shear over the system, which means its head doesn't get chopped off. So it's a very fine line uh, when cyclones are, are developing as to 
whether a trough system can help them develop or whether a trough system will create the conditions that will not allow them to develop. And at the moment, this trough system is positioned absolutely 100% ideally for this system, the cyclone, to develop. Alrighty, from tropicaltidbits.com, we've got the uh, the expected track of this system based on the GFS forecast ensemble. Pretty clear here, it's going to move to the west in the next 24 hours, deepen between 24 to 72 hours. Uh, so we do expect it, once it gets into the yellow here, we are expecting it into a tropical cyclone status. And then we expect it to weaken as it approaches the WA coast. And once again, the big reasons behind the weakening is that increase in vertical shear and also remembering, of course, that we've got a fair bit of dry air near the continental landmass of WA. So as the system pushes into that dry air and into that vertical shear, we should see a combination effect of those two negative influences uh, de decreasing the intensity of the system but as I mentioned over the next two to two days at least uh, we are expecting fairly favorable conditions for intensification so I'd be very surprised if Quang isn't named in the next two days in general the CMC computer ensemble agrees with the general forecast track here we've got this westerly motion followed by a southeasterly motion a whack into the coast here of the North Gascoigne or West Pilbara now there is an outlier here pushing it uh, further towards Onslow or closer to Caratha even and we have also an outlier in terms of intensity so this uh, particular computer model going for a category 2 on impact uh, whereas most of the computer guidance is suggesting a category 1 marginal category 1 or tropical low on impact on the coast in about four days time. Looking at some of the other computer model guidance also the UK Met is predicting a category 2 tropical cyclone making landfall around Onslow uh, in around about three days time so just uh, probably sorry three to four days time uh, so we're looking at a category 2 possibility there uh, so as I mentioned at the moment we are expecting the system to plough through some wind shear but uh, the computer guidance is a little bit skewed in terms of whether that wind shear will affect the system enough to completely kill it or whether the uh, wind shear may just hold off and the system maintain intensity as or at least weaken slower than expected uh, and maintain cyclone status by the time it hits the coast. On the European forecast model, we don't have as sharp a recurvature here. So we don't have a system tracking west and then boom, straight out here to the southeast. The euro has a more gradual curvature to the south. Uh, also, the euro has a much weaker system. So a borderline Cat 1 cyclone throughout the entire life cycle is what the euro is suggesting. Then following on from that, uh, on the fourth day, the top gets sheared away and pushed out here onto the, onto the coast with only moderate falls of rain on the West Pilbara and Gascoigne. So today's rainfall, nothing spectacular out west. Wednesday, nothing spectacular. Thursday, nothing spectacular. But Friday, there we go. The first signs of that uh, activity starting to make it onto the coast here. Anywhere west of Onslow is what we're looking at in terms of moderate falls of rain and probably north of Carnarvon at this stage. But it will depend on how sharp that recurvature is now, on Saturday, we see more of that moderate falls, more of those moderate falls of rain pushing further to the south and, uh, and east as the tropical low or tropical cyclone uh, is approaching landfall by that point in time. You can see that the remnants uh, may be attached to a trough system as well, which means that we could be seeing some enhanced rainfall on the rest of the Pilbara coast as well as we go into Sunday, although these charts don't go out that far. Also, a little bit of exciting weather is about to hit the southeast corner of the state. Uh, it's probably going to hit sometime Thursday night and into Friday. Uh, we've got a, a fairly strong easterly flow here, moist easterly flow, and also a strong trough system that's developing offshore. Uh, that trough may give way to a low pressure centre, and the low pressure centre may be located very, very close to the southeast coast district. And so we see here a period uh, that the computer models are expecting of gale force winds across the southeastern parts of Queensland around about Friday afternoon and night 
uh, and then possibly even as far as into Saturday morning. Uh, we see the low probably going right over the top of Brisbane and the Gold Coast there at some stage on overnight Friday and into Saturday. Uh, so once you're north of that uh, tr tropical low, sorry, not tropical low, we won't call it tropical low because it's not. Uh, once you're north of that low, uh, conditions are going to moderate fairly quickly. Anyway, this isn't really our area, but I thought because there's a lot of people here from Queensland that do watch these updates that you might be interested in knowing a little bit more about that system. So uh, at this stage, folks, that is expected on the Friday and expected to clear on Saturday. So if we look at the rainfall associated with that, nothing to talk about today. And tomorrow we start to see the trough system really develop. And now the trough system is expected to remain just offshore. And so most of those heavier totals are going to be remain just offshore. But there will be some totals or some rainfall totals at least making it onto the coast and also the adjacent hinterland and the adjacent inland districts because there's actually two trough systems in play. Now, I don't want to go into that in too much detail, but there's one offshore and there's one over in land parts of Queensland. On Thursday, uh, we see a big increase in rainfall across the southeast districts. Anywhere south of about Rocky, really, uh, is going to be uh, seeing some beneficial rainfall from this uh, but particularly the southeast coast district, and then on, then on. Sorry, let's just go back to Friday. Uh, there's Friday there, and we can see on Friday as that tropical, as I'll keep calling it a tropical low, as that low develops near near the southeast corner, we see some very heavy rainfall from that occurring anywhere south of the low. On sun on Saturday. Uh, we have all of that activity is now pushing away to the south and towards New South Wales. There is a little bit of remnant shower activity further to the north, but once that low, as I mentioned, pushes south of you, then you're going to see fairly dry conditions re-establish themselves, and the rest of the state dries a bone. All right, how interesting is that? This late in the season, and we're talking about a tropical cyclone. We'll have another update for you on Thursday night. Subscribers, you will have an update tomorrow as well. So please check your current Aussie Cyclones page for your subscriber-specific update. Thanks for watching this one, and we'll, have, we'll talk to you again on Thursday night.